Senator Lindsey Graham joins us before we get to this issue about uh, the Democrats um, and whether they're what the president's right. were saying to them. Uh, I'm curious your thought about this discussion about whether it's a religious war, whether it's radical Islam. Your thoughts on this? We are in a religious war with radical Islamists who've embraced a religious doctrine that requires them, compelled by God, to purify their religion, to kill all moderate Muslims or people who don't agree with them within the faith, to destroy every other religion. And here are our choices. We can fight them over there, or we can fight them at home, we can fight them by ourselves, or we can fight them with partners. I choose to fight them over there with partners, and when our president doesn't acknowledge that this is a religious-driven war, it's going to be very hard to win it. Are there, I mean, just so I'm clear, is that there's radical Islam terrorists and there are moderate <laughs> Muslims non-terrorists, right? There's a doctrine embraced by radical Islamists that require them to kill or convert. Most Muslims do not re feel compelled by God to kill people of other religions. But this radical strain of Islam is compelling them to kill us because we don't embrace their view of religion. It has nothing to do with our support for Israel. It has nothing to do regarding our foreign policy. Uh, this has been going on for a couple of decades now. And until our president understands what the Egyptian president understands, that we're in a religious war, it's going to be very hard to defeat it. It has nothing to do with our intervention in Iraq, like a uh, Democratic United States senator suggested that the people in Paris were radicalized because of our invasion of Iraq. People who think that are missing the big picture here. All right, let me switch gears to uh, locally, domestically. President Obama, is he working? Is the whole idea for him to sort of lead his team, the Democrats, uh, do you see this <clears throat> working, you know, trying to find some common ground right. so we can get some progress in this city or, or not? I think they're doubling down uh, on trying to be obstructionist. We see that beginning in the Senate. The president has outlined uh, several veto threats even before we've taken up the debate on issues very popular like the Keystone Pipeline. The Democrats have to figure out why did you get your brains beat out? Or what is the solution to your problem? I believe if they become obstructionist and try to make us fail when we're reaching across the aisle to solve problems, they will dig a deeper hole. All right, let me go to Gitmo now. The um, president wants to release more people uh, from Gitmo. I don't know if he wants to get down to zero. I mean, there, that's, that's a huge <laughs> yeah. discussion. But, um, but yeah. are we going to see more releases from <clears throat> Gitmo? You, uh, yes, he will try to release more people, but you'll see Congress, led by Kelly Ayotte, putting a moratorium on all releases of uh, high-threat and medium-threat detainees. The President of the United States has concluded that the war on terror has reached a point that we can safely release people from Gitmo. The best I can say about him is he's unfocused. That's delusional thinking. The war on terror has reached a lethal phase, and it is insane to be letting these people out of Gitmo to go back to the fight. 30% of the people released already have gone back to the fight. I believe the war has hit a point where we need to keep these guys in jail at least for a couple of years until we can get a grip on what's going on throughout the world, particularly Iraq and Syria. Iraq and Syria are great platforms for radical Islamists to attack this country and the president's going to send them some reinforcements by letting people out of Gitmo. That makes no sense. Senator, thank you. Nice to see you, sir. And